want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's Holy Word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. Because sometimes you act like you're more than what you are in Christ. You begin to give advice and cut up, hallelujah, to people, hallelujah, that's way ahead of you in Christ. And so you got to understand where you are in Christ, that you don't give a, get ahead of yourself, you see? And you got to watch that. Amen? Amen? And I want to show you a good way to find out where you are in Christ, where you are in your spiritual walk. You'll find out exactly who you are in Christ at Gethsemane. Oh, yeah. You'll find out. Talk to me, Pastor. Well, listen, when the money funny and the bills are due and everybody calling, you're going to find out what type of Christian you are. Oh, yeah, you're going to find out. We want to try to judge ourselves on our best days when nothing going wrong. Oh, I'm a solid Christian. Yeah, all the bills pay. It's not raining outside. You just got a promotion. Yeah, yeah. We all best Christians when things going well. But when the rubber hits the road. What type of Christian are you then when you're not feeling good in your body? When you go through a season and sickness come upon us, it come upon all of us. Where's our faith then? What type of Christian are we then? You see? When the marriage gets rough and rocky. I'm talking about Gethsemane, y'all. You see? When the kids give in problems. When there's problems on the job. When there's no job because you've been laid off. When you're underpaid. When you're overlooked. What you going to do in Gethsemane? Because the way you act in those situations determines where you are in Christ. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to bring that as real as I can. If you blow up and cut up and get in the flesh, that's where you are. You're just a baby. You just look, you look, you're just a baby. If you're going back, reverting back to your old ways just that fast, you're cursing again. You see? You won't fight somebody again. You won't go off on the boss. You won't give up and lose all hope. You see, that Gethsemane was really in us. It's supposed to come out. And so what's really in you this morning? You see, what's really in you? Christ, when he was at Gethsemane, only holiness and righteousness came out. Only holiness and righteousness. The Bible says he was reviled and reviled not again. The Bible says he was hidden, he was, he was beaten, he was smitten, he was, he, he was hallelujah, uh, uh, made fun of. And during that toughest time, Jesus was saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. What come out of you when people do you wrong? Somebody say Gethsemane. Let's look at our second point, saints. The second point is pray. Pray. Hallelujah. In verse 39 of Luke, if you'll go back there with me. Verse 39 of Luke tells us. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he had got to Gethsemane. He said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And so saints... He told his disciples, he says, listen, y'all at Gethsemane with me. And when you're in Gethsemane, you need to pray. You need to pray. He says, pray. You see? And I want to tell you, listen, he could have told his disciples anything at that time. He could have told them chance of getting your word. He could have told them fellowship with other believers. He could have told them, hallelujah, turn on your favorite preacher on the TV or on the radio. You know? But Jesus tells us when you're in Gethsemane, when you're in the time of trial, he doesn't tell us to do many things. Listen, look what he tells him. He tells him to do what? He says, pray. That's big. Yeah. That's big. Because out of everything he could have tell him, 
He said, when you're going through, the best answer is to pray. It's to pray. And a lot of us, y'all, we discount prayer. We don't know how important prayer is. But you got to know that some of our situations and some of our problems, hallelujah, they won't be solved, Jesus says, but by prayer and fasting. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't going to come out. Things not going to change. It's like the only answer. You know? And here we are. We trying everything else, boy. We coming to church. We getting here on Sunday. We getting here on Tuesday. We opening our Bibles. But God said, listen, what I need you to do, I need you to pray. You see? And saying to God, prayer is powerful. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 3 with me. It's just down the road. Luke 3. And I want you to look at an example of the power of prayer. And we just want to look at it here. Luke 3, 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just say amen when you get there. In Luke 3, 21, the Bible says now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized. And doing what? And praying. The heavens were open. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. You see what I'm saying? This scripture tells us something about prayer. It tells us, y'all, that when we pray, the heavens will be open. You see what the Bible says? He was baptized and he did what? He prayed and the heavens were open. How many people need the heavens open in their situations? When the heavens are open over you, that's when things begin to happen. That's when angels ascend and descend. That's when blessings come down. Amen. That's when favor come down. That's when the anointing and the power come down. That's when the supernatural come down. Listen, the problem that, old, that, that the old folk had in the Old Testament is that the heavens were shut. And when the heavens were shut, shut, they say the heavens were like brass. They were like iron. No blessings come down when the heavens shut. You're in lack when the heavens shut. You know, you're not getting paid what you need to get paid at the job when the heavens shut. You can't find a job when the heavens shut. When the heavens shut, you behind on your bills. When the heavens shut, hallelujah, your children not acting right. When the heavens shut, the marriage not going right. It seemed like everything just going wrong when the heavens shut. And you need it to open, hallelujah. Like we sing, open Lord, the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. But the heavens won't open and the floodgates won't open until you pray. You need to pray. Prayer is the key to the heavens, man. Prayer is the key to the rain. And I'm going to tell you, listen, God sent me here to give you a rhema word this morning. He waiting on some of y'all to pray. And not just pray like you've been praying, but pray at another level of prayer. I'm talking about that Daniel prayer, praying three times a day. I'm talking about that praying prayer. You know, the door right there, the door, he's ready to open the door. But he won't open it until you knock. You won't find it until you seek. You won't receive it until you ask. And so he's ready. The heavens will open. That's when the supernatural happened, yo. Listen, on my days where I don't spend enough time with the Lord in prayer. Ooh, the day is just completely different. The day is just completely different. You know? The heavens are open, you know? And so listen, we need to get back to prayer. Not only are the heavens open, y'all, when we pray. Look what he says. And the Holy Ghost descended. Ooh! Prayer summons the Holy Ghost. At court, hallelujah, we give people what's called a summons. And when you get a summons or a subpoena, that means you got to be someplace. Some of y'all touching y'all purse. I got my summons right here, Pastor. (laughs) You see, 
Well, prayer is a subpoena for the Holy Spirit. And it's not that he has to be here, but he want to be there when we start to pray. You see, he comes on down. Amen. And there's some saints here. Hallelujah. Listen, you need more of the Holy Ghost this morning. You're walking in the flesh. Hallelujah. You're easily angered with people. Hallelujah. You're rough. You're abrasive in the way that you treat people. It's a sign that you need to walk in the spirit to fulfill not the lust of the flesh. And we all need the Holy Spirit. We talked about, hallelujah, being filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. We've been talking about that and I'm not going to let you go with it. Prayer not only opens the heavens, hallelujah, but he pours out his spirit when we pray. Y'all, it's after we pray that we get up from hallelujah prayer and we filled up, y'all. We ready for the day, y'all. We walking a little bit taller, chest a little bit more out, hallelujah. We filled up. But that only comes through prayer. In Acts 2, it was only when they prayed, hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind. It was only when they prayed, hallelujah, when the Holy Ghost just manifested himself, hallelujah, with cloven tongues of fire upon their head. It was only after they prayed that in Acts chapter 4, hallelujah, the place was shaken when they prayed and they were all filled up to the overflow with the spirit of the living God. I want to tell you, hallelujah, we got some Christians not operating in the strength of the spirit of God. They operating in their own strength. And when you operate in your own strength, you only get what your own strength can get. I'm trying to get you to tap into another power. Listen, you'll never love your children like you need to love your children except by the Holy Ghost. You'll never get along with your wife and love your wife or your husband except by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it's the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit of God. And there's a husband in here talking, Lord, help me to love her. I got an answer for you. Pray down that Holy Spirit in your heart. You see? Lord, help me to get along with this boss. Lord, help me to get right on this job. Lord, help me to be a better person. Amen. Prayer not only open the heavens for you. Listen, he, he'll pour down his spirit upon you. You know what it means to walk in the spirit? It means that you're not walking no more. But the spirit is really walking in you. The Bible says, listen, he, listen, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ live it in me. You understand what I'm saying? And so when we get up in the morning, that's what we want. We don't want Omar to walk out my day. We want Christ to walk it out in me. Move my leg for me. Show me where I need to go. What I need to say. How I need to act. You see? And when you begin to live like that, Christ living through you, you're going to experience a difference. You see? You see? We need to die to self and let Christ reign. In one of Billy Graham's book about the Holy Spirit, he gives an awesome analogy about our lives. In our heart, there's a throne. And, 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 and on that throne is either going to be you or God. And every morning when we wake up, hallelujah, we need to ask God, specifically the Holy Spirit, Sit on the throne of my life. You be king of my life. You control what I say. You control where I go. And you control what I do. You see? Every single moment, even right now, somebody's on the throne right now in your heart. Who's on the throne right now? Is it you? If you're just cutting up, hallelujah, uh, uh, fussing and carrying on in the parking lot or, or getting dressed or fussing at your husband, that's not the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is on the throne in your heart, he's going to produce some things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, self-control, faithfulness. You see? And every time you're operating outside of that Christian, he not on the throne no more. 
pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time, God bless.